standards are essential for a functional world. When applied, they bring a distinctive quality to our lives and to our work. Yet much of the value we derive from established quality standards remain unseen, quite like what we see in the example of the hidden nine-tenths of the iconic iceberg. The iceberg principle captures the invisible and vital force of CrossQ, CARICOM's regional organization for standards and quality that promotes efficiency and competitiveness in production in goods and services through the process of standardization and verification of quality. CrossQ is a network of NSPs, national standards bodies operating in 15 nation states in the Caribbean, Antigua and Barbuda, the Bahamas, Barbados, Belize, Dominica, Guyana, Grenada, Haiti, Jamaica, Montserrat, St. Lucia, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Suriname, and Trinidad and Tobago. By coming together and collaborating, NSBs form the foundation of the regional quality infrastructure. On top of this foundation, lie the key processes and support systems to develop, promote, and enforce standards in order to advance a compelling quality agenda for the Caribbean. Here, the primary goal is to reduce the technical barriers to trade with the rest of the world for the greater good of achieving international competitiveness of regional goods and services, consumer health and safety, and the preservation of the environment. Consider, therefore, CrossQ as national standards bodies working with their technical partners as well as stakeholders in government, industry and society to deliver a unique value to Caribbean life and work best expressed by these five quality pillars. Standardization, a framework to ensure that the benchmarks we define and set for ourselves in practically every area of life are well-researched, transparent, and uniform, giving us confidence in the quality of the goods and services we use. Metrology, that measure of quality that assures us in scientific, industrial, and legal terms of the quantitative value of the goods and services we use. And then the other fundamental pillars of a quality infrastructure, accreditation, and conformity assessment, which speaks to the development of the testing, inspection, and certification procedures which are necessary for products to enter foreign markets. And of course, awareness that overarches them all. CrossQ, through the National Standards Bureaus, are the standard bearers, so to speak, of the regional quality infrastructure. By engaging and collaborating in focused work and activities around the five pillars, they're building a quality culture for the Caribbean and a profound basis for regional competitiveness. CrossQ leaders meet in council regularly to share their ideas and experiences and to deepen their collaboration to build out the regional quality infrastructure. Developing quality infrastructure will come at a cost, but no greater than the benefits it will yield in improving the welfare of our individual states and our region. The empirical evidence is there to support this. Agreed though that we must be practical in our development and manage the expectations that will come because of it. What we try to get people to think is quality is my life, I expect it, I deliver it. So we're building from, from that point of view. We're get, trying to get people to think, oh, not just of the cost of something, but um, when you put out this cost, how much you expect to get in return and how long you expect that return to last and how much benefit you expect from, from that return and not just 
put out a class and you get something and you accept it and, and, and that is it. The Regional Quality Initiative I think is very important um, because we do not as individual countries, especially the smaller countries, have the resources to build a national quality infrastructure on our own. And so the Regional Initiative helps us, yes as a region to build a quality infrastructure, but then it also gives us some of the tools that we need at the national level to build our national quality infrastructure because the way that Crossview is set up and operates is that things developed at the regional level can then be taken on board and adopted by uh, the national standards bodies and national associations and national quality institutions. With limited budgets and resources, the Antigua and Barbuda Bureau of Standards has achieved remarkable results in the area of metrology, mainly verifications, and has now set its sights on copying a national quality award by the Guyana Bureau of Standards, which, with the support of CrossQ, received accreditation for the Guyana Rice Development Board Rice Laboratory. Elsewhere, the Analytical Chemistry Laboratory of the Grenada Bureau of Standards became the first such lab in the OECS to be accredited to the ISO IEC 17025 standard. The lab is now accredited to analyze moisture content and pH measurements for wheat flour, rice, jams, jellies, marmalades, juices, alcohol, wet seasoning, and drinking water. The St. Kitts and Nevis Bureau of Standards is now seeking to expand its laboratory facilities to build on its growing track record in standards development, metrology, and conformity assessment. The quality infrastructure is um, extremely important um, to us as a nation. Not only that, uh, we have to ensure that the consumers within Senkits are satisfied, uh, co have the confidence in terms of um, the products. Uh, but in addition to that, it's important that Senkits and Nevis can trade um, globally, can compete on the global market. And so we have to put the type of structure in place that's going to facilitate that type of um, activity. In the OECS, we are looking at free movement of um, free movement of goods and as such we must have a quality infrastructure in place that is going to satisfy um, the OECS countries. Dominica in the meantime has enhanced its chemical food testing capabilities. The Suriname Bureau of Standards has increased its quality awareness and sensitization programs and St. Vincent and the Grenadines continue to churn out exemplary standards development work. And in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, the Bahamas Bureau of Standards and Quality has brand new offices. We really want to promote quality in every aspect of the word um, into all the, both the private and public sector. Right now we're looking at developing some standards for the tourism sector, uh, the guest houses, um, we're looking at some of the, um, uh, the boating industry area. Financial services is another huge one for us as well. That's our second industry and so we want to develop some standards in that area. And then thirdly, agriculture. And so we are now pushing that largely in the country and we are playing a major role in that aspect as well. In the cross queue member states of Montserrat and Haiti, still managing the setbacks from major natural disasters, rebuilding the physical infrastructure and catalyzing industries for social development and economic growth are major priorities. They value the critical role robust national and regional quality infrastructure processes will play in their full recovery. We have put in place a six committee to work on priority standards in Haiti, in agro-business uh, standards and uh, construction. We have also worked on uh, making people aware of the importance of uh, quality infrastructure infrastructure for 
uh, competitiveness mm -hmm. of our business sector for consumer protection and to protect the environment. What we want to do is to develop our country in such a way that the livelihoods of our people is sustained. In terms of making things happen faster, we have been focusing on the um, governance and institutional requirements, so particularly legislation, regional um, legislation that can be harmonized and implemented in Montserrat. It's about getting people to work and to work in such a way that they can sustain their livelihoods over a long time and take care of their children and, and be able to educate them. The lively strain of steel pan music welcomes us to the operations of the Trinidad and Tobago Bureau of Standards, strategically located in the Macoya Industrial Estate, near to many of the manufacturing businesses which rely on cutting-edge metrology services. This is actually a Fourier Transform Infrared Spectrometer, aka FTIR, right? This piece of equipment actually combines microscopy with spectroscopy. From the computer interface that we have here, when we place samples on our slide, we could actually see the different fibers magnified. We could actually run an IR test and determine whether it all has transmitted or none has transmitted. We have a test piece of fabric, so um, we compare my results, Asha's results, Ravi's results. So we compare everybody's results, and ideally we should get those results. We actually try to be compliant with the 1705-2005 standard, which is the requirements for competence of testing and calibration labs. So we make sure we have all the things we need to put in place for customers to make sure we produce an accurate result. We have our rigorous internal audit system that we need to comply with as well to monitor our effectiveness how we're doing things, how we're performing. We have a customer complaint system um, to address issues with customers, etc. Welcome to the Chemical Products Laboratory. Here we do um, conformity assessment of, um, of products on the market. Um, we also do a lot of water testing as well. This is a temperature calibration that is being done by the metrology division. Basically, we use the, the instrument to test for organic carbon. We also use it for oxygen demand. And organic carbon is, um, is especially important to the medical lab industry. They, they use it, they need to have and ensure that the water that they use does not have any organic carbon, otherwise it may compromise their, their, their lab results. If you were to think of a, a string of pools, you know, nobody sees the string, but the string is what holds everything together. So metrology is like that. Nobody really sees the value of it. Unfortunately, sometimes when things go wrong, then they see the value of it. But it's just one of those things. It's kind of in the background, but it's vital. In Trinidad and Tobago, there are a number of issues that are quality-based. But what we want to do is we want to ensure that, that what we've managed to achieve inside the lab finds its way out of the lab um, in regular activities that are being taken up by the pertinent um, entities in the society. The TTBS has a very visible face in society and industry through the work of its implementation division and its standard development, certification and accreditation functions.
Welcome to the official live drawing of the Supreme Ventures Lottery Games. A game of chance where the odds are even. Behind the Jamaica's hugely popular Lotto Game Show lies an institutionalized commitment to quality with the routine weighing and calibrating of the game balls at the Bureau of Standards Jamaica. This to ensure the integrity of the daily and weekly draws. All balls have to be weighed three times, the 36 balls. And at the end, we're going to have an average rate for the total sum, as well as average rate for each ball. And there's a variance at the end. That means we do our, um, the ball weighing once a month, commissioned by the Betting Gaming and Lotteries Commission. Once every month, every game, and the ball set for every game has to be weighed. 